Hi, my name is Ivy Starnes and I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. Today we are talking about a relatively simple topic about the horse's eye. Basically, how to notice those little changes that tell you the horse has gone from relaxed to stressed. Now you may think, why do we care to know this? Well, the reason is because those little changes can add up to big things if we don't address the tension and the nervousness when it first shows up. So there's a thing called trigger stacking and you could see it in the comments below or the description. There's a video that I really think is good. It's this idea that normally a windy day wouldn't cause your horse to overreact or spook or get nervous or any of those things. And normally a dog barking isn't that scary for your horse and normally a plastic bag flying through the air isn't scary to your horse. But if you happened to add all of those things up, all of the, in any of those things individually, your horse will stay under threshold where they don't react. But if you put all of those things together, the windy day, a dog barking, and a bag flying through the air might be enough to put your horse over threshold and something big happens. Now, maybe it's a spook and you ride it out and you're fine. Maybe it's a big buck and the horse turns and runs for home. Maybe it's just a little freeze but the horse has reacted, which means he is over threshold. Now, interestingly, horses can go from being relaxed to over threshold very, very fast. That can happen so fast that you won't have time to see. But what if we could see little things? And this is so important uh, also because let's say you have a horse that's buddy sour or barn sour, and let's say at home, right next to the fence where the, buddy, the horses are, he's completely calm. He's relaxed and I'm going to show some pictures of a, cal a calm horse's eye and then a not calm eye. But let's say you get 10 feet away and then that eye shows us the horse is nervous. Now you have a couple of options. You could stay there where your horse is under threshold. You could go back to buy the horses where he's relaxed or you could continue to go farther away thereby increasing the stress and pressure on the horse until he for no apparent reason goes over threshold. But if we'd been watching his eye, his eye would have clearly shown he was uncomfortable. Let's take a look. So here's a picture and the link is to this article is in the description below. The top horse is the same horse in the same location, but I believe the difference is two weeks. Uh, where, so this was just in the arena at the horse's home, but he hadn't gotten used to the arena. In the bottom picture, you can see there's a lot less worry. There's still that little wrinkle uh, that tells us there is some stress, but much less than in the first or the top eye. That shows a lot of stress. Now, notice that we're not seeing the white or the pink of the horse's eye. That's a further sign of stress. And some horses naturally show a little bit of white or pink. We're not talking about that. We're talking about when your horse is not normally uh, showing that and they start to show it. They're showing you that there is stress and it's your job to bring that horse down from stress. Now, it's you because it's your horse, you have choices. You can keep working with the horse, whether you're riding or on the ground, or you could try to do things to help the horse relax, whether it's work on head down, stop and breathe, get closer to the horses because he's buddy sour or barn sour, take him to a place where he's more relaxed, get him relaxed, praise him for that, then take him to where there's a little bit more stress and then try to de-stress. There's so many different things you can do, but let's take a look. Again, the top horse, the top picture is a more worried eye and the bottom picture is much more relaxed and calm. You start to look for those wrinkles at the top. Here's another picture that'll show it really well. So the horse on the left is negative situations and the link to the article is also in the description of this video. Look at all of those wrinkles as this horse is worried. And then the right photo shows the horse being uh, a lot less stressed and they did a couple different tests. They did one where they provided a couple of what we call aversives. So, so they were waving bags or doing some things and the horses would have a nervous look. And then when they took those aversives away or the negative situations and they started stroking them, they found that the stress, like the horse's eye relaxed. So we want to, as owners, notice when our horse is stressed. And there's even things like chronic stress. If you are in England or Europe where the space is at a premium and you have horses that are in stalls all the time, they can be stressed even though it's their own home. And you can start to look for those wrinkles. And what I'm going to do, and I'm going to encourage everybody watching, is start using your phone, everybody's got it with them, 
Start taking pictures of your horse's eye in different situations. When they're eating, when you're bringing them up for tacking, when you're riding them, when you go to a trail ride, when you, after you load them on a trailer, start taking pictures of the eye and just look at it. Notice the differences. Notice where you were when you took the picture and notice what kind of differences you're dealing with. I'm actually going to try to do the same thing as well because I want, I mean, I know these things, but I don't know that I've been super observant, like noticing the littlest changes in the eye. I can get a very broad sense of what the horse is feeling, but to slow down enough to look at something so small uh, is something that I wanna start doing because I wanna notice when the horse is relaxing and when they're not. And I'm gonna bring up a topic that I don't know a lot about, but it's something I'm planning to learn uh, is called calming signals. Now I've read articles about this and, uh, but I have this book here. It's called language and calming signals of horses. And I really need to read this. I have not read it yet. Um, it's on my list to read and I probably will try to read it this weekend. It's actually broken down into really, really short sections, which I like. And there's a lot of pictures and graphs. I don't know if you guys can see like, like this. Um, uh, so let me just give you calming signals um, is the idea that the horse is stressed and so he does things that are appeasement or calming signals. Dogs have the same thing, different signals, but the same thing. And so when you see calming signals, it tells you the horse is stressed, but he's trying to relieve stress. So this is a really cool little chart here. Um, you guys can see that probably can't read it from there but again I hope to do a more in-depth review but at the beginning we have the horse uh, no stress then here stress increases because the situation changes due to a person animal sound or other stimulus in the environment okay then here the horse uses calming signals to appease another stimulus in the environment and to calm himself so examples uh, of this so this is signs that the horse is stressed but trying to release the stress blinking looking away half closed eyes, chewing, tongue out chewing, yawning, jaw stretch, head turn, neck turn, head shake, body shake, seesaw lowering, sustained lowering, curving, splitting, I don't know what splitting is, I'll be reading the book, showing the hindquarters, showing the flanks, eating, immobility, and slowing down. So these are signals that the horse is doing to try to calm himself or calm the environment. So they could do this to another horse, the, the, the clacking, the chewing, the, you know, the Chewing, they do to other horses. That's an appeasement or signal. He's like, don't, I'm just trying to appease the environment. So then stress decreases because the calming signals are working. All of those things I just read. Uh, that is causing, the, uh, or the stimulus that is causing the stress disappears or a person or animal changes his behavior and or the horse recognizes the situation and is able to handle it. And we're back to no stress. So whenever we, we talk about licking and chewing. It gets talked about a lot and it tells you the horse is thinking, but what it is actually doing is telling you that the horse was just stressed for multiple reasons possibly, and he is trying to calm himself or the environment down. He's trying to calm himself down or change the environment. And honestly, if horses lick and chew and we stand still, then he's changed us, which is the environment. Uh, and the calming signal is kind of working. So things to think about. I talk a lot about taking breaths because and giving the horse a chance to stop and rest because most horses won't try to use the calming signals if they're moving but when you stop you really start to see horses try to do the calming signals to bring themselves back to a state of no stress hopefully they started in a state of no stress uh, but again you can have chronic stress if you have horses that are in situations that are lots of stall or they're with horses that stress them out or they're in an environment that stresses them out um, if they can't lay down comfortably, if they're always stressed, these are signs of chronic stress and that can take months to go away. And most of, I, most of our horses that are in pastures, I don't actually think are dealing with chronic stress of any kind. But horses in stalls uh, for either a good part of the day or half the day, and we're not talking about during inclement weather, we're talking about on a regular basis, those horses have a likelihood of having chronic stress. So anyway, that's a little bit about calming signals. Um, because I just wanted to bring that up in, you know, when I was talking about the eye, because it is important to understand what this means. So I do recommend this book. I've heard really good things about it. I'm going to read it and hopefully do a more in-depth review 
for you guys. Uh, it is broken down really easy. Lots of pictures, lots of charts. It's not a very big book. Um, it, it's only a hundred, oh, well, with the index, so like not counting the index, uh, 170 pages. So it's not a textbook or anything like that. So I do recommend you read that. And then again, try do what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start taking pictures of my horse's eye before a lesson, after a lesson, in the middle, when they're grazing, and just start taking a look at the differences because I want to be more observant. And that's such a simple thing. And hopefully we'll get into talking more about facial expressions and stressors. But the goal is to be brave enough to notice when your horse is stressed and be willing to change. So in the Buddy Sour video that I recently shared, I took the horse to a place where she was overly stressed and rearing and whinnying. <laughs> and I took her back to where she was calm and the, the change was obvious. She was way more relaxed back closer to home. And my goal became, became, how do I get that calmness at home to be calmness away from home? And my goal wasn't to, my goal was to make the changes a good thing. And I used food because that's such, it's one of the easiest ways we have to train horses. I use grass, but I wish I would have been taking pictures of her eye, her eye away from home, her eye back at home, and then on the fourth day, her eye away from home because we were able to take that calmness and transplant it to another location, if that kind of makes sense. And there's multiple ways to do it, but the, my goal as a trainer is not to get more stress for the horse, but to get less. So my goal isn't to make it work harder and get more stressed out, but how can I take that calmness and keep the calmness through the whole training? That's my goal. And it doesn't always happen because like sometimes at clinics, I have to ask the horse to pace and work on the head down. And, and the horse clearly is more stressed when I do that, which is why I do lots of stop and praise. And you see the horses take deep breaths and lick and chew is because they're trying to release the stress that I have just introduced. Because if I just keep going and going and going, I just build stress into the horse rather than get rid of it. And without any stopping or without that horse being able to let that stress go, he won't learn anything. So the more we can get a horse to remain calm at all times, the better that is. And it's hard when you just want a trail ride because you could recognize, let's say you've done the work and you've, you've watched your horse and you're like, oh, this is a stressful eye and you're out riding and all of a sudden he gets stressed. What do you do? Do you be like, well, my friends are out trail riding. I guess we're just gonna keep going. Or do you say, hey, we need to stop and I need to let my horse eat so that he can calm down. It's a hard place to be at and it takes someone very comfortable with them and their horse and knowing what their horse needs to be able to make those decisions. Maybe you go with another person and you ride back to the barn and then you stay there till the horse relaxes and you try again. Uh, or you do head down or you practice these things. Um, brief example. My, the horse that I trained, Macaroni, which some of you are familiar with, she, uh, I, one of the first things I did with her was teach her to touch the target. So she was very solid. She knew touch the target, click, get a treat. She knew that. Uh, the very first time I put like a bareback pad on her and cinched it up, she froze. Now, she didn't boot, she didn't spook, she didn't buck, but if we were to watch her eye, and I have videos of it, I think, you're going to see that those wrinkles come and she just got stressed and she froze. And I could have asked her to walk. I could have asked her to do lots of things and she hadn't bucked or spooked, but she may have exploded if I had let her stay in that stressed out state. So you know what I did? I just offered the target really simple right here. I asked her just to touch it, you know, and she touched it right away. And you could just see after she touched it like three times, that tension just melts out of her body. We introduced something new and stressful and scary, but uh, what the touching the target was so reinforcing for her and chewing and eating was so reinforcing, she completely came out of that stressed state. And that's what we want. We wanna build in these ways that we can help our horses calm down. Maybe it's just petting and talking to your horse or old scratches, you find that itchy spot. But our goal should be to help them release that stress. Again, not a super interesting topic. A lot of people don't care, but I wanna share these things because they're super important to being a horse owner and they're things that will make you better around all horses. Uh, I think that's everything. Uh, the links are in the description of some articles and some videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this video has helped you, please share. It helps so much and it helps so many people see and we get new people 
that are watching these videos and learning about gated horses. And we very slowly are going to change the gated horse world. You got this.